Hello, this is Yaakov Kornenberg from Jerusalem, and tonight we'll be doing another class in our series of classes on Aries Ascendant and um, Mars, the ruling planet, and the different signs. Tonight we'll be talking about Mars in Aquarius, an uh, interesting combination, a uh, good combination, especially after you realize this, it, it differs if it's for a man or for a woman. I would say, for example, this wouldn't be the greatest combination in the world for a woman because it's it's uh, it's both masculine planet, as masculine signs, right? The ascendant is Aries, the most masculine of the signs. And um, Aquarius is also a masculine planet, so it'd be very, uh, it's going to be a very outgoing type of person. Right? It, would be, it would seem to be more conducive for, for uh, a man. And like I was looking for charts, and tonight I found a chart of actually of a man who had this uh, this combination. Um, and um, right, if, uh, you always have to look for a chart. You have to always interpret a chart differently if it's for a man or a woman, because they're they're each going to use their uh, how they receive the energy of the planets differently. And so you have to like take that always into consideration. So you see, there's a, there's going to be a double masculine and masculinity there, man, uh, uh, the very Martian uh, type of um, ascendant, uh, the very strong power drive, the urge to succeed. When you have the Mars in the, um, say, the eleventh house uh, in Aquarius, so there's going to be a a person who's very. Uh, very friendly. He's part of. Uh, he bases a lot of uh, of his success on his friends, on his contacts, on his ability to to, to move around in uh, in in social circles. Um, it's going. We always talk about this a lot. A person who got a very strong eleventh house. They're going to be involved in groups and organizations and foundations and all sorts of things like that. Uh, and the man we're going to do tonight, he also is uh, very active in a number of foundations and projects and uh, things like that, philanthrop uh, philanthropic uh, enterprises. And so that's all indicated by the 11th house. Uh, the two planets, they, they go together. It's a nice combination. One is air and one is fire. The air spreads the fire, right? And the fire... Uh, um, it uh, it heats up the air and pushes it and causes it to move also. And so the the person becomes like a self promoter, right? He's got that air, the Martian air. He promotes his airy self. But together, the person is a good talker, a good communicator. Uh, and he tends to work on a macro level because uh, Aquarians are they they like to work in a societal affair, a way, not so much individually. And so all these uh, things are going to be important for the person. Uh, tonight I want to look at the chart of a man who is uh, fairly famous in America. His name is Lee Ayakoka. He was the head of a Ford uh, Ford Motor Company, and then later on he took over the Chrysler Company and saved it from bankruptcy, which was his big uh, big accomplishment in his lifetime. He rebuilt the company. He eventually became a successful author. He wrote an autobiography, which became a bestseller, and he wrote a, a second book, which also is very popular. And uh, he was a man who had a lot of success. And so I want to take a look at his chart. Um, and like I said again, the Aries wants to be is the, wants to be successful. And he's got that Mars in the eleventh house. He knows how to work with people, uh, how to lead people, right? And you know, the Mars can lead the group, which is the Aquarius. He could be the leader of the group. Uh, and he's got a lot of masculine. The chart is very masculine. Again, if you look at it, you'll see he's got uh, two. He's got um, Mars, Neptune, and two planets in Libra. And he's got 
two, three, four, five, eight points in uh, masculine. He's a little bit meh, but he's got most of the eco point, most of the essential points in, in the masculine way. And it's a strong chart. If you look at it, he's got three planets working for the, in the seventh house, working for the seventh house. And he's got one planet in the fourth house. So he's got four planets working angularly. And it's interesting, a very, very powerful seventh house. This is what I want to focus on tonight, which is, like, interesting in his chart. Uh, about biz- we, we haven't really done many charts of business leaders. And so now we'll take a look at uh, the business leader, which is good that we, we could finally find the chart uh, of someone like this. And if you look at his chart, he's got that very powerful seventh house and eleventh house. So he's very... Uh, at least his chart, he succeeded through uh, his ability to deal with people. He was a person who knew how to deal with people and, and get things done, how to lead people, and how to uh, get what he needs, uh, right? Because he was, um, he had everything in these two uh, air houses, the seventh house is an air house, because in Adam's chart, it's Libra on the seventh house cusp and Aquarius on the eleventh. And so he's very, very ability to, to communicate and to, to get what he needed. And you look at his seventh house there, he's got the sun there. The sun is in fall. But a sun in fall in an angular house makes it very strong. Even though it says the sun is naturally, it's not good in the seventh house. Here, it became very strong at least. And he was able to, to help to lead people. And he also had Mercury there, conjunct his son. Um, we're going to talk about that Mercury in a second. I will come back to it. But he gave him again a, a, a communicative ability, the ability to communicate. Eventually he became a successful author. He must have been a very powerful, very good speaker, right? Mercury in Libra. And he also has Saturn in the seventh house. Now, you have to understand that Saturn in the seventh house is what we say it's not good for marriage, right? It's definitely, it's a uh, marriage, uh, makes trouble in marriage, uh, because Saturn is the, uh, is just not the place for Saturn in, in, in the seventh house. Although Saturn is, by nature, it's exalted in the seventh house, because it's, uh, it's a good house for uh, Saturn in a certain way. It makes a person very it makes a person a leader. The Indians learn that if you have Saturn in the seventh house in honor, uh it makes a person a leader. A leader of his clan, a leader of his tribe, all sorts of things like that. And um in his chart he had that something like that, very strong Saturn in the seventh, and it made him a uh, uh, tremendously successful businessman. All those three planets there in the seventh house, I think that's what made him successful. And they were all, try- especially the sun also being trying to his ruling planet, and it helped. I want to look at, focus on one thing, his marriage also. This is a mixed seventh house, because you have a, have a nice Mercury. You have a, a Sun in, in fall, but uh, remember it's a fall in a Venus sign, so it's not so bad. And he had a very powerful Saturn. So it's a mixed bag there, but if you take a look at it in terms of marriage, his ruler of his marriage chart is Venus, right? Because he's got Libra on the cusp, and Venus is in Mercury. Uh, excuse me, Venus is in Virgo. A mercurial sign, but uh, Venus in Virgo, Virgo, uh, Venus is in fall in Virgo. It's very weak. It's not a good position for for Venus. And not only that, but Venus is in the sixth house, which is the house of suffering and illness, house of illnesses and uh, and things like that. And in terms of his wife, it's his wife's twelfth house, which is the house of. Uh, uh, of uh, serious illnesses and things like that, and Mercury is coming from the sixth house and coming on to her ascendance, means in suffering, physical suffering, uh, comes to her. Right, that sticks out right away in the chart when I looked at it, and then I saw that his wife, his first wife, died early, 
of diabetes after they were married. I don't remember how long, 15, 20 years. Uh, she died at early age of diabetes. And after that he was... Uh, so do you see that, how clearly that sticks out there by the Venus in fall in a, in a bad house. You don't like a planet in fall plus to be in a bad house or detriment in a bad house. And it was more emphasized by also having the ruler... The ruler of the seven was in the sixth, and the ruler of the sixth was in the seventh. So it means his wife was mamash connected with illness. Right? And so he must have suffered greatly by that. And then he had a second marriage after his first wife died, and that was annulled after 18 months. And then he had a third marriage, which also didn't last very long, a few years, two or three years. And so... Um, but you see that the, the checkered third, uh, seventh house is very good for business, very good for success in business, but it's very difficult for his uh, marital life. And I thank everybody for listening.